You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. The founding members of the band Psychopath Etiquette are literally a band of brothers. David Sprague and his brother Paul from Southern Maine have basically been playing music together their whole lives, but only seriously for the last 10 years. And this iteration has been together since the summer of 2019. If folk rock had a baby, it would be psychopath etiquette. David joins me on this edition of Americana Music Profiles to talk about this band and their life of music together. Hi, David. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, how's it going? Great. Great to talk to you. Um, You are in Maine, is that right? Awesome. How's the how's the weather up there these days? Uh, it's been raining the last couple of days, but it's been just cold outside of that, so I'll yeah. take the rain. <laughs> no snow yet. Huh? We're talking in December, so it, it should show up any time, right? Right. You have a, um, a band with your brother, Paul. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously you guys uh, grew up together. When did you start? making music together when was that a thing for you guys uh we've been playing together off and on uh since we were kids basically so uh we've always kind of made music together but it's never really been official and we've never really taken it super seriously until just recently how far apart are you guys in age uh six, three years younger than me okay so did you guys kind of go about your own life, different kind of careers, and then come back together, or did you always dabble a little bit along the way? Uh, yeah, we kind of, yeah, we went different ways for a while, um, but we always sort of, like, every few years, we get back together and, like, jam for a couple weeks, and then, uh, yeah, things that happen. I mean, life just happens, but, yeah. So I take it you guys live in close proximity to each other at this present time, then? Uh, yeah, it's this present time. We live together, actually. But, yeah, he lived in Rhode Island for a while. I lived in Boston for a while. So. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, so this new uh, iteration of what you guys are doing is fairly new then, right? This is kind of a new band? Uh, yeah, it's been about a year since we've been calling ourselves Psychopath Etiquette, um, and since we've uh, been sort of consistently playing and writing songs together and stuff, so. Relatively new, for sure. So, I, I wanted to ask you, where did this, uh, where did the name come about? It's kind of a, <laughs> it, it, you you can come up with all kinds of thoughts when you when you hear that name. That's one of the things that I like about it is that like it's uh, not not necessarily a solid idea, but just the kind of ideas that it implies. Uh-huh. Um, and it just sort of stuck with me, and then we got the uh, uh, URL, and that sort of sealed the deal. Cause uh, that's kind of an important part of it, but yeah, I just I, I like the way that the words play together, and and uh, and I yeah, we 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 just settled on it. Uh, one of the um, one of the thoughts that I it doesn't conjure up for me when I when I hear that name is is the idea of folk folk rock, um, and it's on the fringe, of course. But I listen to some of your music, and clearly there's a uh, there's a hint of singer songwriter folk folk rock in the music. Um, what was the influence that brought you to the sound? Um, well, we grew up in uh, and uh, growing up, my mom always listened to folk and like classical country music. Um, and my first real musical memory was like sneaking off to listen to Johnny Cash. <laughs> that that's that she had. Yeah. Um and then we kinda we kinda grew up and you know, we found our own music and sort of turned away from the you know, the folk that we got into the rock. And then eventually I just sort of settled on both. I I learned to appreciate them both. And that's sort of where we're naturally inclined for it. Like I love the piano and I love the electric guitar, but I also love the acoustic guitar. So uh-huh. we kind of use all of them as often as we can. Yeah. And are you writing? Uh, is this 100 percent original, or do you guys throw in some of those the kind of the 
folky classic covers as well? Um, we definitely do some covers, but all all of our music is original. Um, but yeah, we like to see covers sort of spanning all of the genres, if you can. What kind of audience do you see um, being attracted to what you guys are doing? Is there a... Can you tell? Is it drawing a particular uh, group or style of listener? I would say that um, we're like not so um, far off the beaten path that like people who like mainstream music won't like our music. I think that we have a kind of a wide audience, which is one of the things that we like. Um, but yeah, we uh, we we play, you know, uh, not generic music, but close enough to it. Uh-huh. I mean, we, yeah, there's kind of a poppy vibe, there's kind of a folky vibe, there's kind of a rocky vibe, and yeah, we kind of mix it all. I, I haven't seen a particular type of person who likes our music. It seems to be of like all kinds. It takes all kinds. So they, <laughs> they all seem to be different, but the thing that brings them together. I mean, our most popular song is "When Anxiety Is Attacked," and that. Like, what I think the popularity of it is because of this, uh, how everyone can relate to it. It's completely, yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone's dealt with it in some way or another, and everyone gets what we're talking about when we talk about it. So, um, Being a fairly new band, did you guys get to, to get out and play some before we entered into this, this pandemic craziness going on? Yeah, so we definitely had started going to shows. Um, we were, we were having trouble, like, making it work logistically, just because of life and, like, all yeah. of our, all of the other stuff. We both still work full-time jobs, so. Right. The pandemic really pushed us into streaming in, like, a full-on way, which is, which we found out was actually the best thing that could have happened for us. Uh-huh. Um, because, yeah, we just love it. Uh, so we, we stream, like, four nights a week, um, and... It's great, and the people, uh, it's different people, but sometimes it's the same people, and it's just like, they can interact with us, we interact with them, and yeah. it's just a much better way for us to perform than like going out to like an open mic or whatever, or going out to a bar where people are just talking and we're in the background, it's like, people are, I'd rather have like 20 people come to see just us play than play in front of 100 people who are like, <laughs> yeah. going about their lives. Right, you know right, I mean? yeah, yeah. So when you do your streaming event, is that just the two of you guys, or do you have a, a couple other folks join you to get the full band feel? Uh, we usually will usually play like a cut down version, and it will just be. But we have other people from on stuff too. Uh, but for the most part, it's just seeing him. We're the main people on the stream for the most part. But we have like bongos and acoustic guitar, and then we have drums and electric guitar, and we'll switch up. And yeah. and I've got a piano down there too. So yeah. we, we we do. All of it. Who's the main songwriter? I write the lyrics, um, and I write. Uh, so yeah, he's he's the drummer. He writes the drums. He also writes a lot of bass guitar for us uh, for the albums and such. And he he writes some guitar parts as well. Um, so we kind of take it all together. And I'll write the piano and like a chunk, a good chunk of the guitar. So. Do you guys bring song. other folks in to to play that when it's time to record these? Or are you guys taking care of that? No, we 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 play all the instruments okay. right now. I, eventually, I'd love to have some of my musical friends, and I probably will once obviously the restrictions are up or whatever. How we have we figure that out, but. Um, I, so like, we have, obviously have musical friends that we'd love to bring in, but for now it's just us playing the instruments. Yeah. And we love to do it, so. Do you have a particular um, formula or style when you go about writing some of your music? I know everybody's different. I, it's always interesting to hear how each artist approaches the songwriting process. Um, I will always just... So I go through phases. So for, like, six months, I won't write anything. And then I'll have, like, a two-month period where I'm writing, like, a song every other day or whatever. (laughs) 
But what I do is I do, I'll just pick up like an acoustic guitar and just basically walk around in a circle um, and just make stuff up until something sticks. Yeah, cool. And uh, so I don't I don't write my lyrics down. So anything that sticks and like sort of passes that first barrier of approval, and that's kind of how I write songs. And so I've always written songs. So oh, I think I read. Um, maybe about a year ago that you guys put this EP together, Rough Draft, and that's what's presently out, right? Available for people? Yes, that is, it's, and it's everywhere that you'd want to find music. So, yeah, that was, it's very, it's very true to the name. Um, it is very rough, <laughs> but it, um, but that was the goal. The goal was just to get something that people could listen to and get their hands on as fast as possible. So we took few days basically in the basement and just cranked out um the songs that we were playing at the time yeah and and but now we're back in the studio and we're sort of taking it more seriously and taking our time with it um but that won't be out until later or beginning next year probably and what is back in the studio look like for you guys is this a home studio or are you going somewhere and getting help with some outside folks we're gonna so it's a home studio. We're basically going to give it one more try because we uh, we were pretty happy with the EP, the way that it came out, like us doing it all in house. Um, but there were obviously things that we learned doing that, and things that we can do better. So we've upgraded our home studio, and now we're going to like record a full album in it and see what we can do ourselves. And if we're happy with the quality of that, then I don't think we'll ever go anywhere else. We'll just keep updating <laughs> our own studio. Yeah, okay. So obviously you've got some new material that you're going to add to the EP? I actually think that, uh, aside from maybe one or two songs, the EP is just going to stand on its own. I don't think we're going to re-record any of those songs. We've so, got a bunch, we've got a full album worth of new material. Oh, so, so it's all going to be new music then that you're not, uh, that, yeah. you're, that you're recreating, or you're creating new for this, for the album project. Yes. What does it look like for you guys when the restrictions are over? How, how would you like to see this progress? I think that we're going to focus on, uh, like an online presence even after the restrictions are done. Mm -hmm. I think that we will have some, like, local shows, but, like, the focus will be on, like, friends and people in the area, and we'll put on the shows ourselves, rather than, like, going out to venues and trying to get them to do it. But the main focus is going to be online. I think that we it fits better with us, and it's more into what we're trying to do. Is this a... Uh... Uh, something that you'd like to take on the road is you know, touring and getting outside of of your local area. Something that you guys are, are uh, would like to do. I mean, yeah, for sure. Down the road, a tour and especially a tour of like other countries would be obviously amazing and a great opportunity and a lot of fun. So yeah, once we get um, obviously the restrictions lifted, but yeah, when we get some some real support and we've got other people who can play the instruments with us that we love and trust and yes when the band expands we'll definitely look into touring and hitting the road and all that yeah. from jazz yeah have you gotten any sort of uh airplay locally regionally nationally internationally do you have you been able to get that with the ep uh we've hit some charts yeah for sure in uh, Europe and uh, South Africa, but yeah, and there's been a lot of play, not really locally, but that's a, a, us really. We haven't really pushed for that. Yeah, we probably could if we tried, but we've been focusing elsewhere right now. But so you said internationally, and you even mentioned South Africa. Are are, are you? It's interesting. I always find it curious when. Um, bands that have kind of this eclectic you know almost more of a tribe feel for their music you know you either you either migrate towards it or you don't and then you realize that you've got fans outside of probably any sort of personal connection that you can make do you get to interact with those folks do you can you get a, a sense of what it is that draws them into what you do i think that a lot of it is 
like just kind of the rawness of the music, uh, and I mean that in all the senses of the word. Uh-huh. So it's it's very personal songs, and they're very like genuine and not like they're not like one way or the other. A lot of the times, it's like I, I wouldn't. I said I would say that it's been like ten years since I've written like a love song. It's just like straight up <laughs> yeah. happy about love, and maybe that's partly my life, and maybe it's not. But um, it's like it's just not that cut and dry in the real world. You know what I mean? It's never just all roses and rainbows. Sure, yeah, there's always some turmoil, and so the happy songs always have a little bit of a tint to them, and the sad songs always have a little bit of hope in them. And I think that resonates with people more than. Anything. And the other thing is that the one thing, the amazing thing about the online presence is that I can talk to people from Russia yeah. who like my music, and they'll, like, teach me <laughs> Russian words enough, and it's it, I lo- it's the most fulfilling I've ever been in music. Wow. It's just being able to literally interact yeah. in yeah. real time with fans as they're listening to our music. It's just, it's great. I think from a fan's perspective, it's probably very uh, enriching as well because you know over the, prior to this, um, it was very um, it was very hard for a fan to get real close to a musician. Now, obviously, certain genres are a little different than others, but to be able to be entertained by someone's music and then have a have a real time interaction, I think. It, it seems the fan as um, making that deeper connection really seems to uh, give them a much more full experience of your music. Yeah, plus it's a different kind of fan that you end up with because these people aren't just buying into like a song that they hear on the radio or like a catchy chorus. It's like they're buying into us as people. You know yeah, what I mean? They yeah. get to see who we are and our personalities and stuff. So at the end of the day, like, they're not even there for the music at the end of the day. Right. Like, yeah. it's something bigger than that. Yeah. So, and that's sort of our strategy going forward. <laughs> like, we've always said that we'd rather have a thousand ravenous fans than a hundred thousand people who like a song on the radio. Like, sure. Yeah. No question. Yeah. So is this something that you see a future with, with you and, and Paul in this particular version of your music? Ah, uh, for sure. I think that we're. I think that this new album is going to be much more. So, the EP is very much what we've been doing for the past like ten years. It's obviously like a better version of it, but yeah. it's very recognizable if you've listened to any of our music that we've done separately or together in the, over our lifetimes. So, this new album, I think, is going to be a lot more focused on the future of our music. Okay, yeah. As as opposed to what the EP was more like a tribute to the past of our music. <laughs> but I think we're going we're gonna to try some new things, and I think that there's a place in the world for the music that we make that's um, sort of timeless. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But... So, so you mentioned that the EP is is out there where folks can get their hands on it. If they want to reach uh, reach you, get in touch, want to get involved in your in your live streaming, what's the best way to communicate with you guys? So, our Facebook page is our biggest um, by far. We have like ten thousand followers on there. Um, but yeah, where that's where we stream. Well, we stream in other places too, but that's the main place and the easiest place to get in touch with us. Um, so just, I mean, it's a, like you said, it's a pretty unique name. No one else kind of has anything really close to it. Yeah. So if you just type psychopath etiquette into Google, you're going to get just us pretty much for the first couple of pages, which is nice. Yeah, okay. But yeah, our Facebook page, we're always there, and that's the easiest way to get a hold of us. And just say hi, you know? I mean, we get that. Uh, one of my favorite things is just uh, I get notifications of just people commenting on our songs and being like, yeah. Like, thanks for putting this out in the world. And that, that kind of stuff just makes my day all day. Like, I'm way too happy. Like, I shouldn't be this happy. It's not fair. <laughs> well, I, I'm really glad that that's, that's your experience uh, with what you do because it's, you know, not, not especially in the way the world is today. A lot of people don't get to feel that way about their, their, their craft and their art. So, um, uh, congratulations yeah, sure. on and that. It's been, yeah. yeah. 
it's been a long road to get to that time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've been told several times that I don't have a career in music, so I can stop. <laughs> so, yeah, you just have to get through a bunch of those. Yeah, like, right. Hey. Well, it's it's never been a better time to have a career in music than right now. So, <laughs> For right. sure, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, good. Well, thanks, David. This has been awesome getting to talk to you and, and learn about what you guys do, and we certainly wish you the best with the with the album coming up. Yeah, man. Thanks for taking the time. This has been good. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Americana Music Profiles. Find us on iTunes at Americana Music Profiles and on the internet at AmericanaRhythm.com.